One of the most controversial debates raging at the moment is about the ethics of embryonic stem cell research. This debate is curiously being pitched as science versus religion. Sadly, this is unfairly simplistic assessment of the debate that has meant that any argument put forward by any Christian from the field of medical science is instantly dismissed as merely religious arguments. Therefore, what this argument is supposed to be about is often lost in the false idea that this is about religion versus science. Well, is this a debate between religion and science? No, it's a debate about ideologies. That is, ideas that shape our opinions about the world around us. It's not even really a debate between progressive science and conservative science, as we'll soon see. While it's not really a battle between science and religion, it is a very serious ethical dilemma that can possibly be presented as, which is more ethical, option one, to destroy unwanted human embryos and not use these doomed human tissue cells that could potentially save or dramatically improve the quality of a suffering person's life, or option two, to allow medical researchers to examine the potential health benefits latent within unwanted human embryos left over from IVF. This is generally how the debate is expressed because those who are religious generally regard human life as unique and a gift from God. They regard the destroying of life of a human embryo as not only morally wrong, but also ethically wrong. This contrasts by the approach of naturalists, that is atheists, who regard life as a chemical equation and the result of random chaotic evolutionary events. Well, what are stem cells? We all have stem cells. They are essentially those parts of the human body that are designed to make running repairs. When you cut your finger, stem cells get to work to repair your broken skin. But not all parts of our bodies have these stem cells, those building and repairing cells. When you think of those parts of our bodies that can repair themselves, skin, bone, muscle, it's because of stem cells. But what medical scientists suspect is that these stem cells perform an additional function in human embryos. It is believed that these embryonic stem cells have the capacity to become the building blocks of virtually any body part, including those parts that in an adult that don't ordinarily have stem or building repairing cells. It is believed that it could therefore be possible to clone specific body parts like spinal cords or brain cells from these embryonic stem cells and implant them into an adult who has irreparable body damage. Anyone who has known someone suffering with multiple sclerosis or Parkinson's disease has despaired not only at the agony these people have to endure, but at the thought that their incurable predicament can only deteriorate. There is an obvious desire to relieve human suffering and improve the quality of life for those who unfortunately lost the genetic lottery and suffer as a result. And this motivation reinforces the incredible and immeasurable value of a human life, which makes the use of human embryos ironic. When we talk about removing these invaluable and potentially life-saving stem cells from an embryo, two questions arise. Firstly, can the embryo survive if some of its stem cells are removed, that is, harvested? Secondly, assuming that embryo death results from such stem cell harvesting, in what way is this not to be regarded as the taking of a human life and therefore be considered as in utero infanticide? As we ponder these two important questions, let's consider what we mean by an embryo. On day one, an embryo is 0.1 of a millimetre, it's called a zygote. On day two, it's 0.2 of a millimetre, it's called a morella. Day 13, it's 0.2 of a millimetre and it's in placenta formation. Day 16, it's 0.4 of a millimetre and that's called neurulation. Day 18, it's one millimetre long. This is implantation. Day 20, somites appear. Day 22, neural folds and heart folds develop. Day 24, it's three millimeters long. It has initial pharyngeal arches appear. Its heart is now beating. Central nervous system is now functioning. Day 28, it's five millimeters long. Upper limb buds appear. Eyes and ears appear, the brain and spinal cord are the largest tissues of the embryo at this stage. 
Day 30, it's five millimetres long. Pharyngeal arches develop. Face and neck begin to form. Blood system is now evident. Day 35, it's seven millimetres long and the esophagus forms. Day 38, it's seven millimetres long. The cerebral hemisphere forms. Eyes begin to form. Day 40, it's 11 millimetres long. The hind brain formed, that it regulates the heart, breathing and muscle movement. And the digits, that is fingers and toes, appear. Day 43, it's 13 millimetres long. Its four-chambered heart is now formed. Facial muscles are now developing. Ears are now recognisable. The heart is functioning. Day 46, it's 14 millimetres long and the eyes are pigmented. Nipples appear, hand plates formed, kidneys are now producing urine. Day 50, it's 18 millimetres long. The first detectable brain waves are evident. The brain is now functioning. Ears now functioning to provide a sense of balance. Day 52, it's 20 millimetres long. It has spontaneous movements. The nose is formed. Nasal openings are evident. Genitals are formed, whether they be testes or ovaries, and the toes are formed. Day 53, it's 22 millimetres long. The intestines recede from the umbilical cord into the embryo. Eyes are now developed. Day 55, it's 24 millimetres long. Cartilage forming into bones. The brain can now move muscles. Day 58, it's 26 millimetres long. The head is erect and rounded. External ears are completely developed. The eyes are closed, but the retina of the eye is fully pigmented. The eyelids begin to unite and are only half closed. Taste buds begin to form on the surface of the tongue. The primary teeth are at cap stage. Bones of the palate begin to fuse. This is the end of the principal procedure of cloning human life, then killing it to harvest its stem cells. It is bewilderingly sad that so many Australian politicians have been lulled into dismissing moral and ethical arguments against this practice and accepted that this is, the, is only about medical outcomes. This is not a battle against science and religion. It is a scientific battle to discover the effective cures that should be conducted ethically in a way that upholds the dignity of all who bear the image of our Creator inscribed in their own DNA. I take him at his word and be. Christ died to save me, this I read. And in my heart I find a need of him to be my saviour. Yeah.